Hey, Don here. Okay, so uh, I'm going to do just a video here. Uh, it's not live. Um, I'm gonna, because I'm going to I'm gonna be replacing my modem. I got a new modem from my ISP charter spectrum now. Uh, <clears throat> so I've got the modem over here on the table in the, the box. I haven't opened it yet because uh, let me switch to the uh, mic so I can move around mic so I can move around mic. to the wireless mic uh, uh, make sure everything's working looks like it's working okay um, now <clears throat> um, right over here on the table and I didn't open it and it, I've, I've had it for weeks now because well I wasn't feeling good when I got it I didn't feel like messing with it but uh, of course, it's just a box, but um, the thing is right here, it's taped up, and it's a whole important notice. This equipment belongs to Charter. See, they keep calling themselves Charter all the time now, but if you go to the website, you can't go to Charter. It redirects the spectrum and everything. But any, by removing this equipment from this package and or putting it into use, you affirm, you affirmatively agree to the Terms and conditions found in charter.com, terms and conditions. And I've went to that site. Of course, it redirected to Spectrum. Fixing to go there in a minute. And you also agree to use the equipment only to receive charter service. Uh, the agreement. Let's see, yeah. It's kind of hard to stay online. And then you, uh, you are responsible in all caps. They're yelling now. Uh, in all caps for lost, repair, Replacement and other damages and ethical charges associated with uh, your use of this equipment. Important notice, this equipment is provided as is. Uh, and charter claims and disclaims any express and implied warranty. That's the end of that sentence. Limitations. Implied warranties of merchantability, non-infringement, title, and fitness for a specific purpose. Legal leave BS. Charter shall not, which you're bound to, charter shall not be liable for any indirect, consequential, exemplary, special, incidental, or punitive damages. And or... Con functionality of this equipment all this for a modem chartered sole obligation and your sole remedy with respect to any liability or damage caused by your use of this equipment shall be a refund of fees paid by you and uh, for this equipment or uh, the previous billing month so if, it, if you plug it in it has a short in it and it burns up your computer you shorts out something in your computer ruins your motherboard too bad uh, a vessel importate, and then it doesn't go any further. I guess they ripped it off or something. They didn't have the whole the whole Spanish thing in there. I guess it says get somebody to read you what's above. I don't know what I can't read Spanish, so I don't know. Uh, maybe that's Portuguese. How do I know? Okay, I know just you know like maybe ten Spanish words, but only really by hearing and saying them, saying them back, not by reading them. I mean you can tell, you know. But anyway, okay. Um, so let's go look at the fine print. <coughs> um, <coughs> I guess I'll just stay on this mic so that I won't have to keep remembering to switch back and forth. I'll probably, I'm afraid I'll mess up. When I'm doing a live video, I can always just check my live stream and see if I'm still going as expected. But I have to depend on my preview in OBS Studio. Now, okay, so I went and found that site. Uh, this is the site, the page, Spectrum. It was, of course, Charter.com, Terms and Conditions, and it redirected me. I did a lookup, uh, you know, on Google. There, That's my search tab there, top right. And uh, so anyway, but I, so I went ahead and just copied and pasted that, made sure it was spelled right, you know, and then copied and pasted it in here, and it went to redirect it to here. So it was a whole bunch of stuff, you know. So the one I saw was uh, the one Doxis, Doxis modem policy. So uh, I didn't read it yet. Let's see. 
Uh, Charter Internet subscribers. See, used to you, you ha I originally had bought my own modem. I bought it from them, but I bought, bought the modem. And so, um, but they don't want you to do, they don't allow you to do that anymore. So, um, <clears throat> they're not giving you the modem, they're just letting you use it. That's clear. That's, you know, that's fine, whatever, you know. Um, the one good thing about it is, is if it gets outdated or anything, which is what's going on right here, is, you know, they, they're, the speed has increased up to 200 megabits. I did have 60 down and uh, four, five up. Now, well, we can, they say we can get 200 down and 10 up, 10 up, but the most, I, my modem will actually do that, the one I have, but they actually had a mistake in their, their records as to what kind of modem I had. It <clears throat> turned out, I found out by calling them. And because uh, I knew that already, and I thought, well, why are you saying I need a new modem? But anyway, it was after I already went ahead and, you know, I ordered the new modem, and then they said, well, as talking to them, they said, well, maybe you want to talk to the, because I was having trouble with my internet connection anyway, and they said, well, let's talk to the tech, you know, and all that stuff. So anyway, uh, I, I get around 130 to 137. That's, that's what I generally get, unless it's not working right, you know. Uh, never seen anything over that, so uh, which is okay. It's not bad, but it's not 200. So anyway, um, maybe it'll change when I put in this new modem. Maybe there's something about the uh, modem I have that you know just doesn't quite. Maybe it's capable technically, but it just can't. Could be other things in it, you know, like the protocols they're using now and, the, and all that stuff. So let's see. Charter net subscribers are required to use an authorized modem. So and so, so and so. Recommend modems, and, you, and it's talking like you could still buy your own modem. Uh, I've seen this kind of stuff before when I was looking into it. Recommends use past charters full performance, certified testing for a list of modems. And I'm not going to go there since, you know, I've got a modem right here. Minimum uh, qualified modems, testing. I can't read it all. I'm just not good at reading out loud. Basically, you know, they're just going on about the modems, and then the device requires, I thought it might say something like the speed and some stuff. And if I went on to those other links, it would probably give more details. <coughs> but uh, I've already gone through all that before anyway, and it's only interesting to people like me, really. <laughs> Not everybody wants to know all the minute details. So. so, but if you wanted to know everything about their modem policy, you would go to spectrum.com policies doxis dash modem dash policy <clears throat> and so I'm going to close that get some extra pages now I did a search for internet because I thought well one of the things is the TOS of the internet which is not is going to be pretty much the same I mean I just wondered what would change and uh, the one thing I wonder is okay, if, if it's their modem then they have the rights to uh, of course, admin it and all that stuff, which when it was my modem, all all they could do is just admin the part of either letting me connect with it or not. Now it's their modem, so they can do whatever they want in it, which really the one I already have is like that because uh, I can't do anything in it, but just go to it and look around in it. Um, and I got it from them as a replacement for the one that I bought originally. So I, I think it's already basically in this situation I'm looking at right here. But I don't, you know, it's been, I've had it for several years, so I wanted to see what was the deal. Oh, okay, this is just advertisements for their internet stuff. And they always offer new customers a big discount compared to what we pay, so let's don't go there and get aggravated. Here's the page, uh, activate spectrum.net, and uh, let's see. This is, I went, I'm, I went ahead and logged in, it may have already logged me out, but okay, this. Let's see what this says. This is going to show supposedly what modem I have now. Uh, it doesn't look like the modem I have now. I've got my modem model number. Get more device info, enlarge device map, view troubleshooting article. What's this enlarge device map? Oh, you mean picture? <laughs> okay, now let's say get more device info. Oh, okay, PDF on it. Doxis 3. Now this is. This is not the modem. Well, I haven't opened it. It could be the modem I have. I have we haven't opened yet. Okay. Yeah, that's not my modem I'm using now. <coughs> we'll see it here in a minute when I take it out. So, okay, we ha we can't resist uh, looking over some specs. Well, let's download it. <coughs> 
cable F connector female. Well, the one on the bottom is male. So maybe they, oh, they said cable. Okay. So 10, 100, 1,000. So it's a gigabit modem. Okay. So that's faster than the one I got. I think it's maxed at about 300 megabits, something like that. So maybe I'll actually get 200 out of this. Maybe it's just uh, pushing as hard as it can right now. I, I'll have, I'd have to, I'm not going to go really, maybe in the, if I, I just want to get this installed. So I won't go into what the old modem is right this minute. So frequency range, <clears throat> bandwidth, the speed is mostly what I'm interested in. Data rate, uh, up to five gigabits per second. Gigabits, yeah, so that would be <clears throat> 5,000 megabits. So like we're, we're doing 200 megabits right now. So that couldn't go fast. So they're looking towards the future there. Yeah, this is a better modem. I had not went to this yet, uh, so this is brand new to me too. Okay. Channels provide capacity up to two gigabits. Okay, so that's a lot different. Why is it different? Oh, that's upstream. Oh, the maximum upstream. That was download. This is upload. It's two gigabits. That would be fantastic. Of course, we're talking 10 megabits is what they're giving you. And that's what they've always done at Charter is give a good good download speed, but a pretty slow, pretty low upload speed. <clears throat> so you, I, it's, it's from everything I understand about it, at 200 megabits, you're not going to get the full benefit of 200 megabits down with just 10 megabits up. Uh, at least not with things like video and stuff. I don't, I, if I did, I don't do online gaming, but something, you know, intensive like that. But uh, anyway, it's better than it was, you know. I mean, it gets faster and faster. Price goes up and up, of course. But uh, this is still nothing compared to, uh, like, Google Internet, you know, which is the same, about the same price and just a little bit more, $5, 10 a month more for, uh, I was over a gigabit when they put it in several years ago. So I'm not sure what it is now. It's not available here. I'd have it. <coughs> uh, it's not anywhere near here. I live in North Texas. and. Dallas Fort Worth area and it's available in San Antonio or yeah I think it's San Antonio Austin or Austin maybe I can't remember one of those just one city I believe in Texas and period so uh, okay so security just a DOS attack uh, denial of service attack protection well that's good that's in there I don't remember there being any security well there might have been in the other one I don't know I don't think the old ones had anything CLI management, and so you can got to get the IP, but it's probably might be the same as the old one. And this one, I think, yeah, is a voice and data modem. So I think it's going to have a connector. Yeah, right up there at the top, the RJ45 uh, connectors for phone cables. So if I, I don't have that service, but if I wanted to get it, I'd be ready. It's probably one reason why they want to give those out. Maybe they, you already have the modem. Why not get the service? You know. Negative 48 volts, yeah, that's for the phone. They're using the same, so what are they doing? They're not actually using the phone lines, are they, to do that? I thought it just went through, you know, internet phone is what I thought, but that's, I worked in, uh, as a tel installer in telecom, telcos, tel uh, central offices for about a year in 2000, so I learned, I got to learn, it was fun learning a lot of stuff about that, so uh, anyway, neg negative 48 volts is what the re regular POTS, plain old telephone service uses, and it's been around for a hundred and some years, <coughs> uh, runs off of batteries, DC, negative 48 DC, not AC, I did a bunch of work in battery rooms, so, um, power 12 volt, one point, yeah, better, I'm going to have, I'm, the worst thing about this is be getting, digging down under my desk in the dust bowl to get out the old power supply and put in the new one, but I'll use the new one. I could, they could even be a little bit different, you know. 12 volt, 1.5 amps, so. There we go. So that's what we needed to know about that. Oh, that took me to another page, so I think I'll go back to my, if, I, if it's probably logged me out since I went off of it, but. That was my, like, what equipment you have page. So they're having, I think what they did is when they mailed it to me, they went ahead and put it in there. That is not the modem I'm using right now. And I need to go ahead and get it hooked up. Now here's the how-to. Of course, it's really simple. Uh, 
you just unplug the old stuff and plug in the new stuff and screw you know well there's a I'll show the actual thing it'll make more sense but it does have a page here uh, help um, at, well it's at the activate spectrum dot net and then help so and so so and so install so uh, <clears throat> let's get over here on the table and oh go ahead and open the box do the deed <laughs> commit to the fine print the grand spectrum TOS <clears throat> Terms of service. You notice that more and more uh, corporations have all the rights and customers who actually pay, you know, that make them uh, able to even exist by all the money we spend with them. We get less and less and less and less rights. Well, we don't have them, us individuals can't really, we don't have the time or most of us don't have the money if we wanted to hire a lawyer like they do to, you know fight and bicker and loan plus most people don't want to do that we just we just make videos and grapple about it that way because that's pretty much what we can do tell our friends and whine about it that way if we had any <laughs> I'm taking the deal off I mean trying to put the stickers back on there okay so let's see if this is the <clears throat> yeah we could have opened it and saw exactly what we had already couldn't we Okay, thank you for choosing. Oh, we got all kinds of. Pa oh, okay, yeah, you got it. They want you to. You got to mail back the old modem. It looks like this sticker for mailing it back. Yeah, return. Don't lose that. <clears throat> and uh, I can't read even normal size paper anymore, so I won't try to get it up in the camera. <clears throat> um. I can't even read it without the magnifying glass. I hope it's my, I just noticed my preview is way behind. I hope it's not as behind as it looks. It's usually not quite as behind as it looks. Okay. Connect your new, install your new equipment, activate your service. You gotta, that's what you gotta do. So yeah, it can get online, but I don't know if it can only go to that side or what, uh, you know, before you activate it, but you gotta go activate it or it won't work. And I've, I've watched them like when they installed this last one, they, there is a the last one had it, they put they 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 send a script out what they used to do I don't know if they still do it that way maybe like you just go to a website and type in some stuff I don't know well it probably don't type anything anyway it used to use a script and I run Linux and mo and that kind of script was blocked for security purposes you know and so it wouldn't work and so finally the girl it was a young lady that had been my service tech that day as well, what happened is I completely lost my connection because the old modem wouldn't work at all when they jumped up to 60 megabits. And uh, they didn't didn't bother to tell me. It just went down. So anyway, um, she had a little 10-inch little Windows 10 laptop and plugged it up, and it, and it did it. it. It had Internet Explorer that allowed, back in those days, allowed pretty much anything to happen. And it automatically hooked it up. And I was trying to get to the modem login. So I was like trying to remember the IP address of the modem. She didn't know what the heck I was doing. They didn't teach them to do that. That's what they used to do. They used to go to the modem and type some stuff in there. Call They had to call get get some numbers out of there, you know, like the model numbers. I mean, probably some MAC address numbers or whatever. I don't know what. And then give it to them on the phone and they would activate it. But that's not how they did it the last time. So now customers can activate. So that as long as it works, it'll be great. Count number. That's my account number, I guess. Phone number? Yeah, that's my phone number. Okay, so that might be something I need. I don't know, we'll see. I hope I don't have to type in a bunch of long numbers. Okay, there's some question, website, number to call. Mailing will start as soon as you. New servers, I guess if you were a new customer. And you should be able to, uh, you, well, they tell you to put the old modem in this box and send it back. That's what they're saying right here. And I believe FedEx, it goes through FedEx, it's, yeah, FedEx, and uh, they said you could call them and have them pick it up because that would really be good for me. That was one thing I was worried about because I don't get out and drive much at all. So... <clears throat> Oh, we got a book. What? 
This is unusual. A whole book. Welcome. Legal policies, TV, internet, voice. Well, if I have, oh, this is like the whole thing. <coughs> Never gotten this before. <coughs> I think I'll put these papers under the lid so that they don't <coughs> end up falling off in the floor. Now we got a little quick start guide. <coughs> and, uh, move the old modem. I can't see the fine. And, it's this one's got such fine print I can't really connect. I can read the big print, but it's the same thing that's on the website. Yeah, it's pretty much an identical copy. And the back one's in Spanish or something. Okay, so I know. Don't you love it? You just wanted to see the new modem, that's the only thing you really cared about. Well, I have to know this stuff. I have to do it here. Yeah, the only thing that might be even marginally interesting is what does the new modems look like that they're sending out. Okay, so here's some more tiny stuff. Safety instructions. I don't think there's anybody alive that can read this stuff without... And, you know, magnifying glass, I mean, you can't get bigger ones, but still, peering through... This is a good size magnifying glass. Peering through a magnifying, and everything's all, you know, reflections off the lights and the ceiling, and it's just almost impossible for me to read this stuff. It's my eyes already. Okay, oh yeah, and we got a new cable. New, uh, this will be a Cat6 cable. I think I have a Cat6 cable on there already. But, uh... <clears throat> Yeah, here's the power supply. 12 volt. says 2 amp. Well, that's better. Okay, 12 volt. I just blind myself. Okay, and... Now let's get you out of there. Let's see if there's anything else in there. Just a moisture absorber okay so we'll put these boxes over here now yep that's the one in the picture got some plastic stuff on there to keep you from getting scratched one button oh it looks like it has an on off button yeah, that's good because you want to get back there and plug and unplug it all the time. And yeah, it's got the uh, voice. RJ, it's not RJ45, it's RJ11s. RJ45 is the Ethernet connectors. RJ11s is the phone. I used to know that so well. No, I do know it. It's just that I forget. Somehow it popped into my head. Let's see. It's got... Plenty of numbers on the bottom. Hopefully I won't have to type any of that in there. Model E312, E31T2V1. Doxis 3.1, 12OGC. 1.875 amp. Good thing that's a two amp. <laughs> it said in that book it was one and a half amp supply and this thing says it takes one point. 1.875 amp, almost 2 amps. Luckily, that's a 2 amp char uh, power supply. I can't find the end of this. I don't want to leave all that on there. I don't. I just don't like leaving that stuff on there, but also it might even... Well, it doesn't look like it would cause it to run hot or anything. But sometimes that stuff can cover up holes, you know, vent holes or something. I guess if I run my... But this, I mean, as loose as it is, it, it's definitely this kind of plastic you should take off. I wonder if it says anything on the information about <clears throat> taking it off. It'd be bad if I took it off when it don't need taking off. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be taken off. Let's see. 
Remove the modem, unplug it. Probably didn't say anything about the plastic stuff on here. Yeah, I don't think it does. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so let's see if we can find the end of that. It should be like an, it should have an overlap or a, just an end like where there's a space between them or something. It's kind of weird. It's like it's seamless. And it's thick. If you leave it on there and it gets very warm, it's liable to stick to it and make everything ugly. I guess it maybe it I don't see how it can be seamless, but let's just get here on the corner and know it's not stuck on there, it's just nice and tight. There we go. I like to take things off in a nice way so that I can put it back if necessary. But that wasn't happening. It was you know they must have put that it must have been a band and then they heat heat shrunk it on there. That's gotta be how that was. It was a one-piece dealie, okay. Much bigger than the other one. About a bit, quite a bit. Okay, well, let's just leave it right there for now. I may have forgotten and left you on the uh, desktop. That's what I get for switching, isn't it? So, yeah, well, it's all... I got the plastic off, off camera. There we go. Okay, uh, <clears throat> let's go get the old one loose. No, not that one. Endoscope. I'm trying to hurt him get it done. So, uh, you know, while the, the, somebody's gone that usually uses the internet and I don't get it done before they get back. I have no idea when they'll be back. It's <clears throat> one of the other reason why I've been putting it off is uh, that I don't want to do it while other people are wanting to get on the internet. You know, you got to keep things going. <sighs> okay, so... Um, Here's the old one. You can just see exactly that part, so I'll just power it down first and uh, disconnect the Ethernet cable, and then I'll replace that one with the new one here in a little bit. And the only thing I'll... Pro whoa, 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 I'm about to lose my camera. I bumped into my what it's standing on, sitting on. Okay. It's still okay, I guess. Yeah, I didn't figure that was finger tight. <clears throat> they, it's not good to leave them finger tight. They tend to just loosen up. Cable, these cables they use are really stiff, and they, uh, when you move things around, they loosen up, and if it gets loose, you'll get an uh, intermittent connection loss. And so, a lot of people don't, you know, think don't want to tighten those up on TVs or whatever. I don't don't over tighten them. You can over tighten them and make it where you're about to break something to get it off. And that's no sense in that. But uh, you should keep them snug. Yeah. So here's the old one. Um, oops. Switch cameras again. <clears throat> oh. Oh. Can't remember where to go. Okay. So here's the old one, when it shows up. It just has the uh, RJ45 for the ethernet and the RF for the signal coming in, power, and uh, it's much smaller. Doesn't have the, uh, look at the difference in that. Well, I guess since the other one has more hardware in it, um, and they both have like little deals where you can mount them on the wall and stuff. So, uh, looks like my camera's really behind. Well, my, I, some, it, they show to be more behind than they actually are, but it's hard to guess. So I'll wait for a second here. Till, 
I've got them sitting there stacked on each other, not doing a thing right this minute. <clears throat> so, um, at least wait till that shows up. So there they both are. <clears throat> I'm not sure how much I'm repeating myself, but anyway, just thought I'd show them. I'll just pop that other one in the box. Okay, now let's get this hooked up. Uh, let, well, before I put it up there, I want to go get, let's get this uh, new cable out because I'm going to replace the old cable with this one. This cable, that's the, the, back, the, the most important connection in your network is the one going to your modem, from your modem to your, I mean, from, yeah, from your modem to your routers or from your modem to your computer. Everything depends, well with routers, all your computers depend on that one connector. So make sure it's a good one. So let's see. Uh, let's see if it says on the... Uh, yeah, 26AWG, four pairs. Um, would think they'd be using decent cable. Cat 5, it's not Cat 6. Oh, Cat 5E, okay. That's good. That'll handle, I'm sure that'll handle what they expect it to. The one I have on there, the one I have on there, I don't know now that I think about it. Let's pull it out a little bit and see if it's, I'm gonna see what it says. Uh, let's go to one. Okay, I can't, I don't want to pull the modem, I mean the router down, but I can pull it out enough to read it. Cat 5E. Well, I'm going to go ahead and replace it because then this one, this one's got a nice protector to keep it from, uh, let's see if I can put this in a different way so that I can, I guess I can even show what I'm doing here. Uh, after I get, I have to be able to pick that up or something. Okay. Um, now let's go to number in the scope. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's my D-Link router. What I want to do is just find the where it's connected. There it is. It's this, I can tell by the color. That's good. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing there, but it's this one. And it will say <coughs> that my cables are very tied up with each other, it seems. I think it's best if I pull it that way, yeah. Okay, got that one out of there. See, it's got a nice, uh, um, you won't break the tabs. Uh, it's got a protector on it. I guess I could have showed it a minute ago. I can't get, I'm trying to use these, get these twisties off to use one and <laughs> it's all the time, a lot of, especially the more like China and stuff, they will twist twisties backwards. Stood righty tighty, lefty loosey. Well, they'll go the opposite. So this is the connector on the one that I've been using. And see, it's got a protector so that it doesn't break the tab. See the little plastic tab? Now look at the one that I'm gonna use. As soon as I get the twisty off of it. I've got too much light on there now. I guess I could back it off. The way I had it, it was pretty good. Well, that's not helping to turn it off. Let's just leave it. Too many differences in my shots, so. At the, okay, um, so here's the one that's new here. It's got those brakes so easily, so I would rather have it, not very long either, but I'd rather have it uh, in here in such a way that I'm getting it hung on something already. I'm trying to put it somewhere where it won't get hung and it's getting hung. I'm trying to do that. Okay, there we go. 
So, uh, all I was going to say, well, your router is always going to have, it'll either say uh, the port that you want to hook up to for your modem is going to either say internet or WAN on there. And I don't know if I'll be able to read any of that or not, but I don't know if it's underneath or on top. Anyway, there should be some labels on there. But the, it's yellow. You can see that. It, the rest of them are black, the connectors. And it just so happens this cable's yellow, so that's nice. Okay, so... Uh, and since... Oh, it's falling. Since our uh, internet is now down, then the... Uh, you can't really see that, but it's turned orange. That's what this lead link does. Of course, all routers are different in that respect. Okay, now, let's get this. Now, it doesn't matter what order you hook up the cables in. It just matters. This thing is really made to sit like that. It's it's fatter, it's narrower on the top than the bottom, so I really wanted the, the on and off switch at the... Uh, Will fit in here though at the top, but it doesn't matter because you always have to reboot your uh, modem every so often. It's a good idea to do it uh, preventively, even before you start having all kinds of trouble. Okay, now that power supply I don't use. Okay, so I'll hook up the you know the internet and the Ethernet or the RF. See, I've already got the uh, Ethernet plugged in. Now I'll hook up the RF. That's the signal coming in, well, in and out from the ISP, and I just knocked everything over. This is in the precarious way I got this. Now. These are good. Uh, this is the uh, one of the uh, actually you know what this may not yeah that's one of their cables they made I think I was gonna say they did use good cables I had this a year early to early 2000s I had you know first got chartered when it first became available here I was on the AOL dial up to 02, 03, 04, I don't remember exactly anyway I had it originally installed to the middle bedroom and this is the, the back well it's on the end of the house and uh, this bedroom and uh, didn't want it in the living room because you have to run into the living room every time well we didn't have TV we never have had TV service so didn't want it in there just wanted it in the computer room well that changed so I extended the cable in the attic and brought it into here but I think they made a little they made up a little short cable which is something I have the tool I learned how to do that when I was doing that work and not internet but uh, telephone but anyway you still do RF cables anyway I have the tools to do it too so uh, <clears throat> I made one up for up in the attic it was long enough to make the rest of that distance see just just enough to snug it up don't, don't overdo it but if you can loosen it with your fingers then it's very likely that when you're moving these things around and fiddling around with them that you will um, Knock things loose. Okay, so now let's get this other camera and a light because I got to go down under. And no, not to Australia, not that far, but it's going to pretty well feel like it's that far, I think. We'll see. Okay. I'm this, but I am. I mean, if you're making a video, you might as well show what you're doing, right? So here's where I got to go. And, uh, now I'll pull on the, try not to lose it, did I lose it? The old power cord. I had it to where I could get to it. There it is, okay. Now, I wonder if I should. I think I'll do it this way. So I'm gonna pull on it until I get tension on it. There it is. Probably saw that lifting up. Now I see where it's heading. And I can go there. It's going over to that. I didn't know where it was going. 
Yeah, I better leave the camera where it is. actually under a cable. Okay, it's on the back of this, the very last thing. Okay, now we're good somewhere. Now if I can pull that out of there without just throwing any, yanking anything off of here or anything, I'll be all right. Uh-oh, it's starting to hang out. Camera fell. Oh, it's tied, but that's something I do, and I forgot. Something I do to uh, keep from losing cables back down into the back vis of the cable gallery down here. I tie the, I twist them um, to something. And uh, I'm just gonna have to figure out where it's twist tied to now. stuff in the way. Okay, that general area, I'll switch cameras because now I'm up here again. Let's see. <clears throat> I've been here somewhere. See, I've got three routers here. That one's standing up on its end just because that was what made things fit the best. Well, it kept falling off. I couldn't stand it on top of this one. It's got a slope roof like a house. It's, it's made to look like a house. So now I don't know. Okay, I'll have to get a hold of the cable and pull on it again, because now I don't know where it went. But I know it's tied to some, oh, it's tied to this. I remember, it's tied, it should be tied to this, yeah. There it is. Yeah, there it is. So it's right there. <clears throat> yeah. Now you see why. Oh, you did see. One of the reasons why I put it off doing this. So I think my, yeah, my twist tie was way up here towards the front of the world. And now it's, oh, I've got two of them on there. I guess I want to make sure I didn't lose it. That's so hot, it's burning me. Oh. Sorry, I'm trying to make a picture of it, but I'm not. Yeah, because it all falls. This is really getting to be a comedy of errors, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, now I should be able to let go of it, I guess. Okay, now, came out. Okay, good. If so, you know, a lot of times those cables will hang up on something in the worst way, even when they don't have a lot that seems like it would hang up on something, hang up in the worst way and really mess you up, but that did okay. All right, now I am wrapping cables, let's see. So, Put a twist tie on there. Okay, now, uh, power supply. Where's the new one? There it is. Okay, well, it's got a great twist tie on it. I guess I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to send that power supply back. I used to keep all that sort of stuff. Send it back with the old modem, so let's see. All oh, the other cameras down there. So here's, <laughs> this has got one of those horrible types of, but you can't even untwist them because they're so, they don't stay where you put them, you know, kind of twisties. That's the one I'm going to send back to them, but I'll do that later. I don't think I'm going to come off there to save my, save my life. Okay, so this, yeah, sometimes they don't give you very long cables. That looks like it's about the same as the other one, so I think it'll reach, so... Let's get this thing twist tied onto the K, uh, to the RF cable before 
I end up uh, accidentally losing it. So, uh, yeah, I th actually was thinking that this was going to be a little less of a pain than this, but it's not. It's a real pain. Okay, so. Of course, a lot of it's just because I have such a precarious mess here. Okay, now. What do we got? Okay, now here's where we're going to be hooking it up. Yeah, let's see if the last light might be better. There we go. Is every, is there's such a reflection off of this new one that I'm going to kind of have trouble seeing it on the picture. There that is. Oh, yeah, the ref, there's a Bit of a reflection. Oh, I see. The whole back of it is making a big reflection. Okay, so I'm going to just twist that on there, and then I'll pull out the however much I need to be able to plug it in. See, that way I don't lose it. Where does it plug in the top, the bottom, underneath? Okay. So I guess I'll run it. Actually, I think I'll leave it in the front side, and then... And this, this way, oh man, I'm not sure it's going to reach. The other one just barely reached. Well, let's see if it'll reach. I'll just drop it down behind there and see. Oh, well, I can get a little more length out of it. By, it's going to have to go under the leg of this camera. I can see that. There's no, no extra length to play with here. I can see. Definitely see that. Okay. I believe it went to the floor as hoped for. So and I won't plug it into I'll plug it into the down into the power supply first. I mean to the AC outlet first. Let's see what we got. So we have camera? Yeah. Okay, down there in that general area. Okay now. Where did it go? I heard it. Oh, it's all, it's like landed almost exactly where I want it. Oh, good. It's made in such a way it's pointing upwards. Just so happens that's going to work. It's just going to make it. Let's get, I'm not sure which way to go around these cables. Yeah, let's leave it like that. Okay, there we go. See if everything that was already plugged in is still okay. What is that for? KVM switch. I've been thinking about plugging that back in. It's a power to give power to the KVM switch. <coughs> it gets power for the USB off of... Uh, while I'm down here, I'm going to plug it in. It gets power to the USB off of... Uh, the USB on the computers, but it's not enough for longer distances or more power hungry, say, USB devices and stuff. So uh, I have a, I have no more plugs open down there, but I do have this that I think I could move, so I think I'll do that. Let's see, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but oh. There is another plug there. So I need to leave that where it was at. And if that'll still fit, then it'll be all right. This is really not fun. I don't think it'll plug in though. Let's see if it will. place to put my line. I, can, I need my hands, both of them. I can't do a one-handed thing with this. 
it'll reach. I don't know if it'll fit. There we go. Yeah, it will fit. There. Now, when I wanna, if I wanna plug that in up there, I unplugged it and quit using it because I thought it was making noise in my audio. But since then, I think I've discovered that wasn't the problem of my sound system, my speakers, my amplifiers, and stuff. Okay, now. <sighs> Oh yeah, my uh, foot switch from a, I don't guess you can really see much of this. Oh, depends on, yeah, the camera move is re, working too slowly. It's not plugged into the, it needs the power to work good. It's been down there for a few minutes, so. Anyway, that's how I want that stuff, so. Let's get this camera up from there. Oh, so then I did it. Uh, for better or for worse. And uh, get this camera back up here and plug it in. <clears throat> there. Now. Okay. This stuff needs to be a little more forward. This stuff needs to be a little less crooked. Okay. <laughs> my preview of my camera is still showing what I was doing underneath the thing. Let's switch. Okay, now, uh, back to the uh, in the scope. Okay. I've got dust all over my arms. At least I didn't have to stick my head, I didn't bump my head into any big batch of dust that I know of. Okay, we'll leave, the, leave this light just sitting there. Okay, so let's power this thing up. I think it's going to bug me with it out there. It needs to be behind that. Okay. So, uh, there we go. Let's see what it looks like when it powers up. Okay, we got a light there. Blinking. It'll take it a while to finish booting up. I don't know what. Uh, I only have a plate. I was going to say, can I set this somewhere? Well, okay, now it says green or something. Oh, power. Power, it's upside down to you, but blue light. This may only have one light. Uh, you know, the, the others always have a bunch of lights, which is actually good because all those blinking lights drive me insane. I had to hide it. That's one reason it's where it's, well, I put it out closer to the front so I could reboot it because I've been having to reboot it more often in the last year or so more. But uh, to keep my internet connection working good. But, uh, oh, online, there we go. So there are more than one lights, but they're not really bright and they're not, uh, the other one had like different, uh, it was green if it was faster and blue if it was slower or something. And you can't tell that there's any, light, any you know, those, those letters are lit up too. So that's kind of cool. I like that. But it doesn't blink all the time, which is really good. And that's the thing I actually liked about my, uh, uh, D-Link router is it just has that one big old, it's kind of like a big wide, it's not a bunch of individual lights, it's one wide light uh, on the front. You might be able to see it if I, let's see. Yeah, it's white right now, and that means we've got connection. I was thinking I would reboot it to make sure it gets a new IP address to, to the.
Let's see where that camera is aimed. Oh, it's not bad. A lot lower than I usually do it, but we'll live with that right now. So, I got to start making my eyes sweat. So, uh, yeah, I can't do this. Change it out. Okay, now. That should be good enough. Okay, now. Um, yeah, well, so it's not quite as simple doing it as it was in my mind. I really thought, oh, that'll be really easy. Don't don't put it off. <coughs> okay, now I'm going to go to the desktop. I'll take one last check at it. I'll go ahead and put it on the, de on the install thing. Uh, yeah, so it still just says power and online. So I guess that's all you're going to get out of it. And then my router, my D-Link is white, and I, then I have the TP-Link, and then the T uh, TrendNet, after, daisy chained after that. Oh, and then there's an orange blinking light uh, on the Ethernet side. So luckily that's facing away from my bed, or any, not going to bother me. <clears throat> so <clears throat> uh. <clears throat> So now, if you want to go review the instructions, actually, we do need to go on down to, okay, we did all that, put it in, and I'm not using a splitter. If you had TV, then you'd have to be using a splitter. <coughs> um, mine just comes straight to the modem for the internet, because that's all we subscribe to. Um, so I did all this, connected the power cord, and now, okay, now activate. So now we go to... S HTTPS activate. Of course, if you just type in, if you just typed in activate spectrum.net, you'd get there. It would automatically take it to HTTPS. And if you have Wi Fi router connected to the modem during action, please restart Wi Fi router after the modem is activated. Well, I already did that, but maybe I'll do it again. Uh, now, let's see if, of course, that page, you must be. Uh, Log into this network before you can access the internet. Okay, so open network login page. Huh. Let's just go ahead and reload it first. It may do that again. Okay. Huh. Now, do I do that or do I just clinic get started? That's a Firefox uh, notice right there. So I'm going to click. This is it, that page, activate spectrum.net. Well, let's do both. Click that. I hit control. Let's see. You must log into this network. That's kind of what I thought. So uh, let's reload. Yeah, I hit control so it opened up in a new tab. I always do that so I don't lose where I'm at. So I'm going to hit get started. Okay, yeah. Verify your account. Now, some of this I won't be able to show, will I? Okay, let's just start. Let's put that camera on me. I don't have any other. I don't have a. Blur, I don't have the camera aimed at the monitor, so I can't do the blurry monitor thing like I've been doing. Let's put it on me. I don't like the trash can being showing. Okay, yeah, I don't want to show all my personal information. Okay. Zip code. Checking your services. Okay. Now then, activate your equipment. The hardest part is just select the device you want to activate. We'll take care of the rest. Activation may take up to six minutes. Billing for new devices begins when one or more devices are activated. Okay. Oh, okay. So the tech, the uh, tech in E3, I'll double check that, but uh, yeah, ARRIS is what they show on the other one. And I don't believe that's the name brand of that modem, but uh, oh well, that's like model number. But let's look on here. Some of these papers had that on it. I'm going to look on here and make sure. I mean, uh, I guess I could look at the old modem. It probably says that on the back of it or something. Or I can look on this one. Yeah, there's that sticker on it. Let me do that. Yeah, I'll do that. 
Uh, I'm almost certain I know which one. Well, actually, there's only one that says activate <laughs> the tech, tech N E3, but I'm just going to look and make sure. The other one, yeah, it doesn't say. You can't, you can't pick anything else. I just noticed that. Okay, so uh, that's not personal. Well, yeah, it is. It's my Mac address. Okay, so I don't want to show that either. But I will go down here and, sh and uh, go to the endoscope <clears throat> while I look at the back of this for a second. Where's that sticker? Where is that sticker? Oh, it's on the bottom of it. I don't think I can pick it up that high. I can't. The wiring won't let me. Okay, well, there's no choice to do anything else, so. <clears throat> so, you can't mess it up too easily. Desktop. Oh, desktop. Well, there's that. I said I wasn't going to show that, didn't I? Um, I mean, the Mac address showing that to the Internet's not that big of a deal anyway, but uh, there are some people that could use that information to figure out how to hack into your, your, your you know, your network and stuff. <clears throat> um, might take up to six minutes, so-and-so, so-and-so. Active devices on your account. Okay, so the ARIS. I have to, I have to at least look at that modem and see if that's what it says on it. I know that's not the brand of it. Oh. Yeah, it's a surfboard mo model, so uh, SB6121. So I don't know where the ARRIS comes from. They may just not have that right because that is not the modem I have. Maybe they're giving it some number of their own. So anyway, uh, like I said, there's no choice to do anything but activate one. You know, that's it. So I'm going to activate it. And uh, this is something I don't want to screw up. I don't want it being down. What if it was down and I had to have them come out or something? You know, that, that's why I'm being kind of you know, picky about it. That light on that endoscope is so bright, it's bugging me. I'll just turn it off for right now. Okay, so activation in progress. You got your progress bar and everything here. Keep the browser window open while it's happening. Well, luckily this is working it doesn't rely on dangerous scripts, you know, JavaScripts or whatever, or Flash. I don't have Flash, or I can play some Java things on my browser just by default in Firefox, but I don't have Flash installed. I don't miss it. Don't run into anything I care about. Uh, and uh, I don't run into a lot of pages that don't work, you know, and stuff. And that's also with running Adblock Plus, so... <clears throat> So uh, that's good because it used to be real. You had to have flesh to surf the internet. <coughs> I think I just noticed there's even a little bitty picture of the back of each modem. Yeah, sure is. And it give, you can see the connectors that are on each one. It's still working. Uh, yeah, he said it could take up to six minutes, but the blue line's to the end of the deal, so. I was kind of wanting to go over there and look at those papers again. Well, I can just look at them. I swear I saw the model number in some of these papers. Because I think that's what I read it off of. No. Nope.
wouldn't think it would take six minutes, really. I figured it'd take like 30 seconds or to a minute. Three at the max. But you never know. But it's still just sitting there with a spinning blue thing. Um, even though the blue line is at the... I figure it'll go somewhere and say, okay, now you're activated. Let's see. Yeah, it hasn't come changed the window or anything. Okay. Well, I don't know where I saw... I thought I saw that on paper, but I don't see it now. Oh, it was... I guess I saw it on that PDF. Uh, for the, uh, let's see, I downloaded that PDF. Where is it? Spectrum data sheet. Oh, I think that might be the, no, that's probably it. Doxis 3 modem. Oh, I still want, yeah, oh, I'm not on. Let's go to desktop now. I don't see it. That number. I would think it'd be at the top or something, or the bottom. Okay, let's go back to the page, see if it's done. Still working. Uh, the number is, let's see, TCHN, yeah, I remember seeing E31 on <clears throat> something. It's not on the modem. Uh, well, it's really a data sheet, it says. It's not really a, yeah, it's not a manual. <clears throat> So I'm just going to leave it over there where I can know when it's finished. Let's see. So I doubt we're on the, well, we might be on the Internet right now. I'm not sure. Well, yeah. I guess we can go to Google. Let's see. I mean, we're on Google. Let's see if we can go to another page. Yeah, we have Internet connection. So, but I'm not going to do any, I'm going to keep it, it says, uh, Wait, it's activation, take up to six minutes. Please keep this browser window open while we complete your activation. So until it changes and says, of course, <laughs> it might just sit there doing that forever. And then if I reload the page, it'll say, okay, you're activated. But I'm not going to do it yet. It said six minutes. So, uh, you know, some of uh, this stuff depends on that page being open and you'll break it if you, uh, just like when you're uploading videos to Google. If you don't get away from that upload page, it will break your upload. So found that out. Don't ask me how. Okay. Don't want to talk about it. Okay. And more than once because I kept forgetting. That's why I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> okay. Oh, let's see. Um... Yeah, I'm not sending that cable in. That's my cable anyway, probably. The cable's long lost which one came with the modem. I don't think they really would expect you to send the Ethernet cable in. Hey, what would they do with a used Ethernet cable? Only I would want one of those. Okay, so uh, I think we're done. I think it's, uh, I kind of think it's activated, but. I'm not, like I said, I'm going to wait. But I, can't, I guess while I'm waiting, well, one thing I can do, I kind of was interested in comparing the specs of the two different. Uh, uh, yeah, I think I'll do that. Two different modems. I have one of my, I, well, I might, I don't know if I have one or two old modems because, like I said, I bought the first one. 
But to this one, I'm sending back because I think they might they might try to charge me for it. They actually had on my account that it was mine, it was customer owned. But I do know that they replaced my original customer owned, so I'll just send this to them. You can't use them for anything. I guess I'm getting really loud because I got my head down real close to my little mic. This one's made, it's a Motorola surfboard, but it's made in China. This is the old one. So, just looking at the power supply that it has 12 volts, 750 milliamps. This one wouldn't have ran it. So, yeah, definitely don't. Uh, Try to make things easier on yourself by not swapping out the power supplies. You always want to pay attention to your power supply specs. Uh, you know, it's a good thing to know and to know what's going on because, you know, sometimes it, you know, if one of them dies and you need one real bad, you, you if you know how to read the specs, and basically just if they're with, if they're the same exact specs, you're good in the same connector, of course. There's one thing though, some of them are. Um, the, like if it's a barrel connector like these, the inside will be negative, say. Well, the picture will show you, usually. If they don't have that picture, you could be in trouble. You can test them out with a multi-tester, but like this one. Okay, this one, the outside is negative and the inside is positive. The other one could be the same or it could be the opposite. I didn't notice. I wasn't trying to find that out. But, you know, if they're reversed, then you'll blow out whatever you plug it into. So, Or at the very least, it just won't work. So <clears throat> don't do that. Uh, and then you, there is a little leeway, but I'm not going to go into that. If you know enough about electronics, you know, you don't have to be an engineer, but if you just know kind of enough basics, you can figure out whether or not. And you can always read data sheets, real data sheets, to find out what that equipment could run on, the least and the most it can run on, and then you can know for sure. But I've always been able to, you can, you know, well, older equipment back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s was much more tolerant though than the newer stuff. Some of the newer stuff will blow out pretty easily. It will blow it up if you put too much of a power full of a power supply on them and stuff. Especially voltage. Too, too many volts, you know. But anyway. Um, let's go see again. Is this thing, it's just still sitting there. I'm not going to, I'm just going to fiddle around for a while and wait. Uh, I'm not going to, probably I'm getting, getting the feeling that since I'm on the internet uh, I'll go back to Google. Let's see. Let's go to uh, Yahoo. I mean Google. Let's go to YouTube and see if. Uh, what am I on now? I'm on the desktop. Okay. Go to YouTube. Yeah, I went straight to YouTube, which is the last thing I was on there. So uh, that's those instructions. So. Uh, I don't want to necessarily show that, so um, confused about what to, where to go and what to do now. Go to the instruction page. Oh, I was wanting to leave that up so that I can go right back to it. It's only showing your MAC address, but I still don't. And of course, now that I've done that, anybody could pause the video. But. Uh, so here's the one I just installed. I want to open it up. I'm going to compare the old to the new speeds and stuff. Trying to. Okay, so the uh, downstream is uh, up to five gigabits, which is five thousand megabits, and uh, around in there, right close to that. I don't know if it might be like megabytes and all. Like it's not exactly thousand, you know. Like 1024 megabytes is a gig of RAM, you know, like that. Uh, and then upstream, uploading is uh, maximum, sorry, where we go, two gigabits. <clears throat> so that's 2,000 megabits. And uh, my old router, I believe I have. I don't know if I have it on the. Well, charter, it's either in the. 
charter folder or yeah Motorola oh yeah Aris the last time I downloaded it I actually downloaded it in 17 the Aris make sure it's right <laughs> now I'll be able to figure out where I'm at and what I'm doing. Uh, <clears throat> actually, that ought to be moved over there. I'm going to rename it to something. Let's see. New in 2018. There we go. That ought to help. Yeah. <clears throat> Move it over here to that folder. That'll still, until I close it, it'll still be fine. So now let's see. Still just sitting there doing that. <coughs> yeah, this is the one I just took out. Actually, that's not it. What the heck? That's not the same modem. I don't have that. That might have been my really old one. It says Doxis 3 Eris. Why do I have that in there? Oh, I might have been researching. See, this is one with the, I don't know what they were using. I might have been researching. That's not the one I have. Motorola Surfboard is what I have. Yeah, that one right there, but that's a web page for it that I saved. Wait. I guess I could open that page. I'll do that. I was wanting to... Let's see. I don't want it to open up on... The wrong thing. See if I can still on my account page there while I'm at it. Don't necessarily. Oh, it might tell me something. <clears throat> It'd probably tell me to log in again after all this time. Huh? Didn't look like it. Yeah, now it shows this modem, the one I just put in. It shows a picture of it connected. There we go. Yeah, E31U2V. So there you go. That is the new modem, and it's, I bet you it's activated in that page is just going to load all day. But I'm still going to wait. <coughs> now, I'm going to open that up in case when I click on this to open it. It may open up in a new page. I'm going to open up in Firefox and it's local you know it's saved on my device here but on my machine but <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know if it's going to over op open up in the same window that I, the last window I was in or what it's going to do it's taking it forever the machine didn't even want to okay yeah this was an email evidently oh this is what Jeff sent me I think oh okay my old neighbor that's probably his modem that he has yeah Or roll a surfboard. No, anyway, we're talking about, but that's not what I was wanting. Oh, it's a picture of one. Yeah. Oh, this, yeah, that's his modem. See, it's a picture of his modem. I, I didn't want to fool around with reading all that, so. <clears throat> I think I have, um, I may, it may be in a different, like in my backup drive. I may not have anything about my modem on. That was my new modem in there. Let's see if we can use a wild card so that it might, might actually find what I'm looking for. There we go. There's the manual. Is it going to open it? <coughs> didn't open it, it just I think it tried to put me to, to it but it didn't put me to it over here so 
let's just see if we can. No, that won't work. Why doesn't it put me on it? Show you if I go up there if it'll work. Usually it'll put you when that goes down. It'll you'll be on it on that side over there. You know the one folder that it's in. If you say view, it's going to try to view it in a text editor. I think. Yep. So you can't even read it. So what am I looking for? Charter Spectrum. Oh, Motorola Surfboard. Okay, that didn't work good. Two M's for some reason. Now that was great. Home, Don, Documents, Charter. There, Motorola Surfboard. Manual. I don't know why it wouldn't just go there for my search results. <coughs> See, it's a Doxis 3. That's why I thought it would uh, do it. So let's see. The other one, oh, downstream. So we'll look for downstream. Downstream, that's about the lights. It's still about the lights. They have lots of lights on that one. So I won't miss all that. Eh. Let's see. Finding the, the the speeds and stuff might be on like the last couple of pages. Let's see if we can find it that way. Sometimes it's best to search through a document to find what you want. Sometimes it's best to, if it's in there, <coughs> that's on the front panel. Oh, well, how can I? Safety, introduction. This is a huge document. Is there a search? Fine, that should be it. Um, megabits per second. I already forgot what they're using, GB or gigabits or what? Megabits per second. What? Maximum dot says 32 different ch channels provide speeds up to uh, Oh, 1372 megabits per second. And then maximum dots is 3.1. Oh, was this 3.0 or 3.1? I didn't notice there was two different ones in there. So it, it, it's going to be either 1372 megabits or it's going to be uh, 5 gigabits. So let's look, yeah. GBPS and mega MBPS. GBPS and MBPS. That's not even in there. I don't think this one would do that. Well, it's not coming up that way either. You hear it? Can you only search the page you're on? Or what? Specs. I think it's searching the whole document now. I just wasn't putting in anything that was on there. Documents are that hard to search. Find they're not they're not using <coughs> anything that you could pick up to, <laughs> you know, find what you want to know. Uh, 
How about speed? Yeah, back to the, where I started. So somewhere in this huge document, I'm pretty sure there's going to be some specs, and I'm just not seeing them. Go to the top and work the way down again. It could be closer to the top. I found it before, oh, it was, you know, and uh, I just always forget. Probably have something in there with the, I just thought about the, the speeds of it, like in a screenshot or something. Yeah, there's the IP, 192.168. It might be the same. I guess I should, well, I didn't see it in there. We'll, tr we'll try that one, 100.1. <coughs> Let's see what's going on with that. It's still doing the same thing. Let's see if it, that's what it is for this one. It doesn't look like it. I probably would have already went to it. Oddly enough, these uh, you know, these companies are heavily on proprietary stuff, but they have no problems using open source software in their modems. <laughs> of course, Motorola built that, not to Charter or Spectrum, but of course, Motorola builds proprietary stuff, but they're using open source software to run it. Not quite sure how that works out. <clears throat> you should be able to copy, you should be able to do anything you want with that software if it's open source. It's uh, but they always have things saying you can't change it and stuff. So I looked through it before. Not that I even know how to, something like that, I don't know how to do. But there are times when certain devices I'd like to play with, but modems or, you know, I mean, your, your uh, services, it's got to be set right for your service to let it work. So there's no, no sense of messing with them. Okay, so. Uh, <coughs> Back and look at this again. Yeah, that's not coming in, so we'll get out of there. Okay. But yeah, I'm large device image, more device info. Oh, that's the little deal I downloaded a while ago. So, uh, what was I was trying to do? Went back and it didn't. <coughs> oh! Let's do a speed test and quit fiddling around. I don't, I don't know, but it's not anywhere near the specs of this as far as my old modem goes. Uh, <clears throat> I'll go here first. That's one of the, the one I used for years, and then maybe I'll go to that one I like that does auto speed test. I just thought of that. Okay. Hey, it's more. It's like we get, might get 200. It might get 200. And maybe it'll be a little more dependable because my connection has been up, you know, not very dependable lately. Hasn't been for a while before I got on and off, on and off about being dependable. There we go, 213. See, normally with Charter, I've always gotten a, a bit more than what I was subscribed to. So, unless something's not working right. And so now this modem can do it, and the other one couldn't. All of a sudden, I'm getting all these ads that I don't usually get. I'll do that later. It could. It got. I think it got updated. And I think when it gets updated, AdBlock Plus. I think it uh, sometimes goes back to allowing acceptable ads, and they're not acceptable to me. They didn't see what just happened popping up in my face like that. So let's send that. <clears throat> Pretty
pretty sure the activation is done, but I'm just going to leave that page open a little bit longer until I'm ready to say okay. I know it's been more than six minutes now. It has to. I'm trying to send that speed test to myself. And, uh, Jeff, I wasn't thinking that. <laughs> Come on. Daggum link won't do it. Won't, you spell, I'm using the keyboard to... Uh, Attach that screenshot. It's not putting it in there. Nope, that won't do it. I don't know, sometimes it goes out of whack and it just will not make it into a link like For one thing, I hit, sometimes I mess what I'm trying to type. And I, Control L is what's supposed to, you know, in Thunderbird, you can just hit Control L while it's highlighted and make it into a link. Well, somehow I somehow on the keyboard jacked it up. I kept hitting the wrong keys and somehow it changed it to Control K. And I began to remember that. But, well, that problem, what I was just having of it ended up being empty in the box, that happens anyway sometimes. So, testmod.net. I'm going to turn that automatic speed test on. But I believe we're set up and going now. It's kind of hard to read that, but combine. See, it's download, upload, and then combine is off down below there. So, you click that one because I want upload and download. And the most often you can do it is every 10 minutes unless you log in and I still haven't ever I mean it's free you can sign up and all that I just haven't ever done it and uh, I only want five times I don't need more than that start automatic speed test so it'll do a speed test and then every five, uh, 10 minutes it'll do another one <clears throat> so I'll let that run for a while and see my average speed test and it also keeps it on the site so you can go back there and look at it you don't even have to log in to see it and it doesn't tell anything about you or your connection. You know the people, so I really like this site. And I, I think it's pretty accurate, too. Uh, going to, well, there's a lot of things you, you can kind of learn about what makes them accurate and not accurate. See that? Okay, now that's 156 uh, and 10, but it may jump back up when it's uh, 10. That's, well, that's still more than what, uh, you know, I've been getting. And some, I don't remember getting that. Go back if I went back through my history. See, like uh, the size of the file, you got to pay attention there. So 45. See, that one was when was uh, November 4th. It was 45 down, 10 up. See, it wasn't too good at all that time. And then it was 150. Oh, that's 157 down and three up. Now that's bad. Yeah, that's why I was having trouble with my stream the other day. What day was that? The 4th. That's today. That I didn't run that today. Hmm. I don't want to get off my test page. You guys leave that page open. So anyway, it'll run again after a while. So uh, it does fluctuate, I've noticed. When you run these automatic tests, you'll notice that it's not as steady as you might think. If you just run a test here and there, you might think it's pretty steady, but... It fluctuates, um, I would say, about that much, maybe. Well, I've never had 200 megabits. I always had 60. It used to fluctuate around 10 megabits up and down a lot. But, uh, yeah, that's still just like it was. So I'll leave it on the speed test page. I was still really wanting to know... Uh, What did I search for last time? Motorola. I want to know the specs. Let's see if I can go by the model number this time alone. Okay, that's still the same files. 
Oh, <clears throat> the specs are supposed to be in that HTML file. That was uh, actually an email. So I guess that would be accurate enough. Okay. Where was that? Saw it. Yeah, there it is. Motorola. Okay. This was, yeah, it was from Jeff. I don't know if these specs are for, okay, that's mine. That's what I wrote, okay. I guess that was a link to just, what is that? Huh? Yahoo store. Well, I guess it was just a place where they were selling it, and yeah. So, and that's the place where they're selling it, and I guess it has the basic specs in there. Oh, it's not there anymore, looks like. So, yeah, I was just trying to find the specs, and that one's not doing anything either. Let's see, out of stock. Oh. Well, I guess I could, like, <clears throat> do something really silly, like just Google it, huh? So, um, what is it? Motorola Surfboard. I just was thinking I had it right there in those folders and I should be able to find it, and I may. Logs, yeah, there's some of the PDFs I make print. I printed to PDF, you know, of the, uh, there's a manual. I just looked in there and couldn't find it, so. See what that one is. That could be <clears throat> another manual. Yeah, that's just the manual again. Okay, so that didn't help me because. Okay, paste and search. Okay, I can't can't stand that. I gotta go in here and do whatever I gotta do. There we go. Allow acceptable. Only allow. Only allow, okay. Yeah. Uh, Additional plot media, social media. See, when it updates, I guess now it does that. It goes back to the defaults. Okay, yeah. So that's what Advert Block Plus is doing now. It's going back to the defaults. <coughs> so, yeah. No ex yeah. Now when I... Reload that page, all that junk will go away. It makes it really hard to find what you're looking for with all them ads in there. You get fooled into clicking on junk that's got nothing to do with what you want. Well, there's the, there it is on Amazon, but what I want to know is, let's just go there first, but what I want to know is the specs. Okay. Cable router service up to 172 megabit, megabits download. Oh, and up to 131 megabits upload. Well, no wonder it couldn't do 200 if that's really its specs. I don't think that's right. Let's go. Oh, let's see if it has a manual. Oh, I was just looking at the manual. It won't matter. Sometimes I have a manual download page. Let's look at specs. There we go. Let's see. Seen it. Yeah, that's usually not bad. Maximum transfer word of So it wasn't capable. So my memory was wrong, and the lady that I, told me I should get a new modem was right all along, and me and the tech guy were both wrong because he said he thought it ought to do it too. When he didn't know for sure, he said, it was wrong in there what modem I had. So he was guessing by the, he said, I can look in the MAC address and see that that's a faster modem than what. They had me down like the max speed was maybe 60 megabits or something. I do remember that now, something, something really low. And uh, Yeah, okay, so it was more than what they had me down for, but not 
300 megabits I left on. Oh, data France for rate one gigabit. Okay. Yeah, they they keep <laughs> they keep name you know naming it this, naming it that. Maximum transfer rate 195 megabits. Well, what the heck? So what? Oh, okay. Networking modem. Maybe if I paid more attention. Gigabit Ethernet. Okay, so the Ethernet. This is gonna be, then this is gonna be the internet connection, the WAN connection, and the Ethernet. Because gigabit Ethernet is gonna be a, a thousand megabits. <coughs> and I already lost the spot where I was where I saw gigabit, but wherever it's yeah one gigabit. Networking, network adapter, wired, Ethernet, gigabit. So yeah okay so the gigabit is for the <coughs> Ethernet which is good and the uh, other other lower numbers are for the internet connection RJ45 connector okay so I think I'll put this if I have I don't think I have uh, a folder for that it's a thing I'll put it in my ch charter folder. But I'll put that as the old modem. <clears throat> okay, that's all I needed to know. Now, <clears throat> so should I reload that page yet? Let's wait. Just a little bit longer. Let's see, has this done another test yet? November 4th. No, that says 45 megabits. Is that like not showing them in? I thought the newest ones were always on top. 5.037 p.m. That's download. Now that's pretty slow. I was trying to remember <clears throat> the one that charter they have one I think the one I went to speedtest.net is the one they want you to go to. Let's see. But they told me one when I was on the phone. Spectrum.com, this is the one they want you to use. It may be, yeah, this is, well, it may still be the one I was just using. No, this is Spectrum.com Internet Speed. So this is still a different test. Let's see what we get on it. Yeah, this is a different test. They used to always want to tell you to use that other one, that first one I used. <coughs> now, see, it's showing, of course, that's going straight from, my machine to their servers, their speed, their speed test servers. So it's going to be the optimal. But real internet speeds depends on a whole lot of different things, and that's what that other one tries to give you is real internet surfing speeds. So that's why I like it better. Still, if you start with 200 megabits, and if it goes down from there to, <laughs> you know, even 45 is not, it, it, you're still going to be able to watch your videos and everything. You know, so 215 and one. Uh, 215 and 11.5 but yeah ever since I've every time I get uh, use this one I usually get the higher highest speed you know I do I always do screenshots of my tests so. yeah 167 uh, upload 8.8 .8, last test it did This is hard. It's hard for me to read. It's in, you know, like this. Okay, Le like you're used to seeing them. Le well, I mean, left to right, I like that. You know, you got to pay attention. Uh, somewhere in there, it tells you the si size of the file they download. Let's see, not on there. Okay, so they don't put that in there. But down here, they're putting the size. This is the size of the file they're uploading and download. This is the speed. And the only way you tell up from down is a little arrow. So that's up 8.76. That's down 157. That's up 3. Point, see, that was really all down, okay, 
but you'll really get it. You'll know, and you can tell that this one's right because when this gets pretty slow, you'll notice you're having, like if I'm streaming videos, I'll be having trouble, or if I'm watching videos and they're caching, this will reflect that. The other one won't reflect it. So, uh, in you know, in practical use, I, I would trust it more. Okay, so <clears throat> now let's look through this with a little more sense about what it might be talking about. Uh, well, I saw that at the beginning. LAN, 10, 100, 1,000. I saw that at the beginning. Okay, so downstream, okay. Okay, so maximum dots is data rate. Crowded capacity up to 5 gigabits. Maximum dock system rate downstream channels up to 1372. So this is going to be your real maximum download. I don't know what that's even about. Uh, some kind of total of the whole device or something. I don't know. But I can, I can just from experience with the way they give you specs on stuff, that's going to be what you, that's not, I mean, nothing wrong with that. We're only trying to get 200, so... <laughs> No big deal. And then the upstream, <clears throat> um, and I hope this will make a difference. But having, you know, 10 megabits or actually getting around 11 megabits sometimes. Uh, when I like this video, I'm going to have to upload it. Well, when I upload it for years now, anytime I upload a video, it generally brings my uh, internet connection to a halt. I can't watch videos or anything. I can barely even surf and check email while it, the whole time that video is uploading. If it takes an hour or more, then that's a real pain in the butt. So I can't stand to upload videos, you know, just to upload videos to YouTube, you know. I don't really try to upload them to other places, so I don't know what would happen in other sites. But Now, if they're being uploaded a little bit at a time, like with Google Photos, is which what I've done to get around that problem, is just use Google Photos. But you have to have a Windows machine to do that, or have your phone. My phones will do it. Usually, I make the video on the phone, and then I just let it upload it, and it does it at like a little bit at a time. It takes a very long, all day sometimes to do, you know, several videos, but it doesn't mess up with your your surfing. Uh, so I'm hoping that that will be fixed with this, unless there's some. I've talked to checks before about it, and they just had just had no clue what could be wrong. I have one clue, but and I've asked them, and they just, oh, I don't know, I don't think so. And what it is is when I added the extra link to the cable, which is not too long, they all say, no, that's not too long, that's not it. Uh, that's the first thing I ask them. But I use, instead of a regular just connector, I used a, a lightning filter that you normally put, like on cable or, or satellite. I had bought a bunch of them. That, and they, what they do is if lightning hits, it gets a huge you know, sp surge of power like from lightning, it just opens the circuit. And, I, and, I, and it's been up there in the attic in a hard place to get to, and I thought maybe, when I started having that problem, I thought I ought to check that out and see if it gets better. And with my health being bad, I almost did it one day, I was up there doing some work, and I wore out and I just could not stand to crawl down. I forgot to get the right tools, or I forgot to get the little connector I needed, I think. And that's what it was. I had my tools. I didn't have the connector. And I didn't feel, I couldn't crawl down and back up again. And so I didn't do it. And that was years ago. So so I actually asked a tech once or twice since then when they had to come out for problems, which other problems that they fixed, <clears throat> when it got down to nothing, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and they, none of them ever said, well, I think that would cause a problem. So, of course, I wasn't sure if they really knew what I was talking about either because it's not something that cable providers use. It's generally used with satellite hookups and stuff. But it's just a silver can that I can imagine. I've never seen what they look like inside, but I can imagine there's some sort of filament in there that, you know, like moves with heat, you know, or like, you know, when, when you get a surge of power, it also puts in heat. So imagine it works by temperature. Because it's not electronics, it's 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 a, a hardware. It's all hardware. It's an aluminum silver canister. You've probably seen them if you've seen any. I bought them in pairs. That, that pair, you know, when you have a, I've never had satellite, but I, I've learned about how you know the basics of how it's hooked up. But you always have two lines for satellite. That's why I say it's really for satellite, not cable TV. And they don't ever put them in on people's houses for cable TV. But they, 
I do believe they work because I've had it on most of our TVs for years, and uh, they don't cause any trouble with your TVs or anything. And uh, one year we did get uh, a lightning bolt came down right between our houses and hit our our power cable, and it blew out several things in the house. And one TV got blew out because it didn't have one of those on it, and I didn't know it didn't have one on it. And uh, well, we lo what did we lo we lose lost I lost them. Well, it didn't completely destroy my Zonet router. <laughs> It actually made it, it, it somehow zapped something in it so that it would con work fine on the local network, but it wouldn't connect to the internet anymore. <laughs> and, uh, oh, it ruined a computer. We lost one computer because it didn't have any protection on it, which I didn't know in the other room. And uh, I don't remember what else. Oh, we had several of those. Uh, we had the old regular CRT TVs, and we had several uh, damaged two of those uh, HD TV tuners that we had on there. So trying to find the, uh, this is the upstream, okay, maximum channels up to two gigabits, so-and-so, so-and-so, and then maximum speeds up to, yes, yeah, it doesn't say, it says capacity, it doesn't say speed, down here it says speed up to 246 megabits, so capacity and speed. Okay, now maybe they mean, well, you know, like, when in your phone plans, you know, you have a maximum of uh, so many gigabyte, gigabytes or giga, it's usually gigabytes of data that they're, you're allowed to pay, transfer until they charge you more money. Well, that says gigabits, which is speed, not, not uh, data size, but data speed. So I don't know what the, really what that represents, to be honest. But yeah, 246 up and... 13.72 down. Well, that's pretty good, and it's working. So, uh, let's close that up. Let's go back to videos and see if our video is still working. It should be. I'm not seeing it grow, but when the bigger the video gets, the slower it takes for it to go up to the next point, the next uh, count on the counter. Let's see if everything looks okay over here. Okay, we're on the desktop, okay. Looks like we still have audio and everything. Okay, yeah, one day I was running this and the speed wasn't very good and it made things worse. <laughs> I was trying to run this and watch some videos at the same time and it made my videos cache more. Uh, just because it's uploading and downloading stuff. Most, it's, I think it's the upload that caused the trouble. Oh, there it goes right there. Now it's doing a test. <coughs> it's on test three of five. So I think I'll let it do all five this time and then look back through the results. I like this site very much. You, you kind of look at it when you don't see the speeds you hope for, you're kind of sad, but then you think, well, maybe it's not right. But I think it's really more accurate, like I said, to actually surfing the Internet. And they've been around for a really long time, too, longer than most of these other sites. A lot of these other sites, you can tell uh, they're so busy that they're giving bad results because the server's just overloaded. <laughs> And this one's not that it's not busy, but they, they've been around a long time and they have like a humongous amount of servers and, they're in more, and they have servers in more than one location. But uh, so we got 149 that time and 10.7 up. That's, well, about 10 more than what I've been getting really uh, generally. So I don't know. We'll, <laughs> we'll see, I guess. So that page... Um, we're obviously done. We're online. We're connected. It says so right there. And of course, I'm sitting here surfing, doing speed tests. So what I'm going to do then is reload and see what kind of what we get out of this page. Leave. <coughs> okay. Now it says verify your account. Okay, so we don't need, but see this is activate, so we don't need to activate again, so I'm not going to do that again, <clears throat> I'm not even going to save that page, but it says we're, we're activated for this, and I know it's been a heck of a lot more than six minutes, and we're showing them the um, modem, so... Uh, as a picture of it. So I believe it's all, I'm, I'm sure it's all good. I mean, 
And the thing that's going to make you kind of wonder is like, okay, it's uh, never quit working, you know, but I think what would happen if I wouldn't have activated it at some point, it would have probably shut me down, I would imagine. So uh, there we go. Let me sign out of that and close that page. I close it. I don't need it open anyway. Now, well, I was going to say I'll go look at my, my video, but I'm not making a stream. I couldn't do that because uh, I, you know, took the modem out and for a while there during this video, I wouldn't have had no stream during that. I did, uh, yesterday I did a bunch of long, worked all day. I made a bunch of videos. And I'm planning on doing some more. I want to get back to my, I'm going to go back to my DNS server, but I was setting it up. <clears throat> but uh, for my website, but uh, or trying, I'm not sure if I can do it. But uh, I think right now I might just rest for a while and watch a video. Okay, so yeah, so normally on my, you know, I have those intro and outro texts and all that and this music, but there's no point using this because this is not a live stream. And it gets, I've done it before, and I thought, well, why did I do that? That's going to be confusing, you know, because it wasn't a live stream in the first place. So I won't be, I remember not to do that this time. Okay, so there you go. Um, there's exactly what it took me to uh, replace, reinstall my new modem. And it's no big deal. Uh, I mean, the connecting it and all, that's easy. But if you've got all kinds of wiring and stuff and dust under your desk like me, then it's a kind of a pain in the butt. And if you're trying to make a video, I probably had more trouble than anything just fiddling around. I have cameras falling around and all that stuff trying to do that. But oh well, I like making videos. So there we go. Uh, now I'm glad I did it for sure now. I got more speed. Maybe it'll be more dependable. It won't be, because uh, it has been like yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yeah. Yesterday, uh, my stream, usually my stream is always good and green, going green. You know, it's a green line across there. It, kept, it went to yellow several different times. The first time I stopped and started over, and, and well, it, when I started it, uh, I, start, I reloaded, restarted things, modem, routers, all that stuff, and then later on, I had just done that, and I'd been streaming for quite a while, and had just done it on the count of calls, and uh, it did that. It went yellow, and, but I just left it. I had just started, so I thought, well, it, I've, in the past, when I first started streaming, just two, three, about three years ago, that was a problem more back then, and it would just go yellow, green, yellow, green, and then if you're in real trouble, it'd go red. So it, it went green again in five less than five minutes. So, but now maybe I'll, I'll quit doing that. Uh, hopefully, I figure there's been up and down, up and down ever since they started upgrading the service in our area. So I, I was thinking that well, they're still working on it, but maybe it's because I didn't install my new modem. And so today, when when I, I realized, oh hey, there's not you know not going to be anybody using the internet in the other room. That's a time I need to do it. You know, I've been kind of thinking I'd do it on a weekday in case I had to call them and somebody had to come out because of my wiring or something. But uh, I thought, well, they're not going to come out the same day. So this is Sunday. They'd come, at the soonest they'd come out is tomorrow. So I might as well do it today. So it actually was real painless getting it hooked up. Well, let me say that and then something will go wrong. But it's, 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 ac it's showing to be on my count and it's working. So all right. Uh, I'm going to go now. Bye-bye.